All right, so let me go ahead and talk about some about the textbook now that I've got a more definitive plan of how things are going to torture you, okay? Because uh, right now, we've done chapter one and chapter two very clearly. I'm going to assign chapter three for you guys to read, but that's more, you're going to just learn that because you're going to mess up. Because I mess up. Didn't I just talk about how I totally forgot about where my port was? Um, and they had already plugged it in. So, you know, you're going to mess up. We're all going to mess up. We're going to have a great time about it. And by great time, I mean, I mean you're going to probably pull your hair out. So, um, so chapter three is more of a learn by experience, but these are the kind of errors you'll make. Chapter four, we kind of introduced very briefly. Again, that's going to be more of a thing you're going to learn about as we do it. I'll assign you reading. Uh, we're going to talk about the random module in a bit more depth today which is that um, and we're going to have a brief philosophical discussion about what is randomness anyway. Um, so then the chapter, and then so the basic meat, so the meat of what we're going to be learning is going to be chapter five, which is the turtle stuff, and chapter seven, and I'm kind of going to blend them together, which is iteration. We're going to skip chapter six for right now, because I feel that it go they, that doing chapter six after seven and eight kind of works a bit better. But the meat of what we're going to be learning, and honestly, don't be surprised if like this all merges together in a big unordered glom. These next the chapters four, five, six, seven, and eight. The book does them in a good in a good way, but not necessarily the best way to present it in class. That's why. And my job is to try to teach you, and the best way to teach you is to keep you at least marginally entertained. So, um, so we're going to introduce turtles, some of the basic operations we can do with turtles, as well as for loops. And I'm not going to go into too much depth about for loops. We're going to go over the very basics. I'm going to teach you, like, if we write a loop and it says this, then it is going to do this a specific number of times. We're not going to... So we're not yet going to delve into like, we might delve into nested for loops, but not necessarily anything that is like, um, but that's going to be more of a preview for things to come. We're not going to talk about like uh, for loops that have variables in them too much. Okay. Um, so let's talk about random numbers. Um, so we're going to use random numbers later into the semester to do what's called Monte Carlo simulations, which sounds really, really advanced because they're a statistical method and use them for figuring out statistics and stuff. But really, it's just saying, uh, I don't know what the statistics are, so we're going to play. So imagine you go into a casino. You don't know what the, what, the, what the rules of the game are or the chances of like a roulette wheel is. So you just figure it out by watching a bunch of games, right? and just recording the results. And you figure out, oh, everything has an equal chance of happening on a roulette wheel, right? So these are all the possibilities. And then you, but you don't figure it out by necessarily doing the math. You do it by saying, okay, I'm gonna create a tally. All right, this came up as a 20, now it came up as a two, came up as a two again, now a five, right? And we just keep making a tally for a lot, uh, for a lot of stuff. And that's how we figure out the statistics of something. That doesn't sound necessarily useful until you realize that some things are really hard to kind of figure out the statistics for. Uh, and math is hard and boring, and so we don't want to do too much math. So rather, let's just uh, use that. So the random module, um, to do this, we will be importing. Uh, randomness is basically any time we need to use a um, some kind of, of random generation. So things that are we consider random. Uh, flipping a coin, picking a number out of something, drawing a number out of a hat, selecting one unlucky student out of a class. I'm not going to do that right now. So um, uh, allow, you know, you know, when you're playing video games that might dictate if you're playing Tetris what the next pieces are, right? You know, when you play Tetris it's not always the same order of pieces that come down. Right? It is some, they basically, you might, you know, you might be waiting for that, uh, you know, that line to Tremo for a while. 
You know, it's like I have this calm, this well lined up to drop to get a Tetris, and uh, hopefully you've all played Tetris and understand that reference. But uh, but you know, or shuffling a deck of cards, right? That introduces randomness. Now, a question, of course, that you might want to, if you're in philosophy right now, you might want to ask is, uh, is anything truly random at all? Because you know, uh, flipping a coin, the result could if we knew all the inputs, could be physically calculated, right? The amount of force I apply on the coin, the anger, is the angle, not the anger, at which my finger hits the coin, how it, that can calculate, how it flips up in the air, there, how much time it has before it hits the ground, or am I catching it at some point? Let's assume it hits the ground because that's easier to calculate. So we'd calculate bump up, and then we'd be able to calculate where it hit, and then on the ground, and we could kind of calculate what the outcome is. So is that truly random, just because we don't know at, at a glance what the outcome is? Uh, similarly, it's the same thing with a deck of cards, right? Shuffling a deck of cards, that's a random process. Or at least we assume it is, but then you go up, but then you watch Penn and Teller do stuff with, uh, with cards, and they basically uh, show that actually it wasn't random at all, and we just simply uh, cheated the entire time, right? I mean, that's a common thing with common trope, you know, you can totally just manipulate a deck of cards however you want if you've got really good hands. Um, so, um, so random though, we assume though that like, but for, but for us, we assume that basically if we take a die, a six-sided die and roll it, each of those sides has a one in six chance of coming up. That's kind of the assumption. Similarly, when we flip a coin, we assume it's heads and that heads and tails are equally likely to come up. Um, and that's what we do with, our, um, with computers. What we generate are called pseudo-random numbers because actually they're not completely random. They're, they're, there's a process to calculate numbers because remember, there is, on your computers, there are just zeros and ones. <clears throat> not much we can do with zeros and ones to like, generate something randomly. Um, so this might involve like taking like some amount of system time and adding in a bit of a twist to it, but we generate the random numbers using a process. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we do. So I'm gonna just use this over here rather than writing a script, import random. That is the random number module. And then basically to create a, a random number, Let's see what random not random does. So there's a bunch of ways we can generate random stuff. First is random not random, okay? And that generated a number that looks fairly random. 0 0.3, random not random. And notice that it's not generating anything above, I know I'm going fast over here, but if you take a look, you're gonna see that we're not really generating anything above um, the number, uh, we're not generating anything less than zero and we're not generating anything above one. So random not random produces, let's see. Well, let's go and look at the documentation because I want to get it exactly right. Oops, random Python. Now this is the most basic of, of, random, func of random functions where we're just simply using it. Uh, should not be used for security purposes because it's just useful for getting stuff that is statistically random. In other words, if you're doing some something that you need to model, <coughs> then this is good. But if you're trying to keep something secret, we didn't design this to not be reverse uh, engineered. So um, let's see, random dot random. So generate a floating point number in the range of 0.0, .0 inclusive to one exclusive. So generate something between zero and one, one, including the zero, but not including the one. This notation where we're inclusive on the beginning and exclusive on the end, we're gonna see that a lot in computer science where we go up to, but don't include the end point. Okay, that happens a lot in computer science. Um, now, not on the computer, but like in mathematics, how many numbers are there between zero and one? Yes. There's an infinite number of, 
of numbers between 0 and 1, um, which is why you can get away with just doing this. If I needed a random number between, uh, zero, between 0 and 100, I could just simply, you know, take the first two digits, right, and use, it, and use that. And use that. Um, there are, um, but, you know, math is hard and we're lazy and we don't want to necessarily always generate stuff between 0 and 1 and have to figure things out manually. So that's why we have random dot rand range. 1 through 6, 1. So let's go ahead. So math dot random dot ram range, when we, when we use random numbers, we're mostly going to be using this because it's very useful. Let's see, do we ever get a six? Doesn't look like it. Unless I'm really, really unlucky, I'm never getting a six. Right? Again. Stop and start. Return a randomly selected element between that from start, stop, step. So it goes up to, but does not include the last number. Make sense? So this gives me something one up to, but not including six. If I wanted to include six, we do have a different function, which is right below here, which is rand int, which gives me something between 1 and 6, inclusive. Um, now again, remember, random is the module that we used over here. And the dot is just calling a function that we wrote inside the module. Basically this, and, and we haven't got into functions yet. We don't really need to. Just Right now, you know you, what I'm doing is saying these are the magic words. We can also do some interesting stuff from random, uh, like we could say random dot choice. Let's see, hello. So there, given a string or anything that's a sequence, we'll learn more about lists and other sequence later. We'll select something at random and. Unsurprisingly, if I ran this a whole bunch of times, I'd get more L's than anything else. Because, of course, it has two L's in it. It's random and uniform. Yes? We can't really create the Oh. Bah. My bad. Forgot about that. All right, so it's easy enough to fix. You go there. You go there. All right. So, real. So, if you need to remember anything, really remember to generate random numbers, we import random, and then what we really need to do is either use rand range or rand int. We'll use this a bit more uh, when we want to when we want to see our when we add some, want to add some randomness to a turtle. But it's always the same way for using a module that's built into Python. So let's go ahead and see, and basically see our, I'm going to run our first, so let's go ahead and talk in more depth about turtles. Turtles are the, like these really fun and fantastic assignments. Um, uh, these little fun and fantastic things you can play with. Um, let's go ahead and see. Um, right, where do I need to put it down? Classroom, ITP, Spring 2020. Okay, mm. again, you don't want to call your file turtle. That will lead to some errors. So what we do is we are going to import the turtle module. And that in and of itself, let's move this over here because we're not going to really see anything printing out over here. Uh, instead, we're going to focus on the screen. Um, 
basically, it, the um, the tur the uh, any turtle program is broken up into three steps, um, which is create a turtle. Um, sorry, import turtle. That's first. Import turtle. Create a turtle. Make the turtle do things. And then step four, if you're not in idle, idle handles this automatically, but if you're not in idle, you want to do this, you need to do uh, turtle.done, which says that we're done with the turtle. But don't, if you don't do this, if and you're not running idle, then the window will automatically close after the turtle finishes moving. So um, if you're in idle, you don't have to worry about that. And it's totally OK if you put this line in, even if you're running idle. It won't do anything. This just simply pauses the program uh, when it's doing. So it's very easy to manipulate. Uh, so Turtles it was created for a programming language called the Logo. And it is a very awesome programming uh, language. But Turtles were designed to teach kids how to program. But honestly, I think it's great for teaching adults how to program. Uh, because it really emphasizes what you see is what you get. So to create a turtle, uh, we are we got to create a new actual turtle uh, to move manipulate on the screen. I'm going to call him Bob just because simply that's a short name, and the most common name. And in, in computer science examples, we'll use Alice and Bob a lot for A and B. It's just Bob is a lot more memorable than Mr. B. So we're going to call our turtle Bob. And we create a new turtle by saying the magic words turtle dot turtle. Okay. And what this does is that this creates a new turtle object. An object is this really strong variable. It's like, it's, you know, it's a really strong data type that we learn, that you learn more in the next class about, but can't get away from them too much. Which is that they are a collection of all these variables inside of them and all these actions that they can do. This just creates a new one. We can create multiple guys, and we'll get into that in a bit. But for right now, I'm just going to simply make Bob do stuff. So created the turtle, make Bob the make the turtle do stuff. Bob dot forward fifty, and what that does is that that moves him fifty pixels ahead. I'll get into what a pixel is once I've run this program, and then I'm in I'm in here. We want to do turtle dot done, not Bob dot done. This is just telling the entire module to pause. Because remember, we can have more than one turtle. So over here, what, what that happened is that we had a turtle, and we moved it forward a bit. Now, let me guess. Everybody in the back, and then also people in the front, can barely see that, right? So let's go ahead and, just for me, because I'm not operating on one of your computers where you can get in and see the screen, um, I'll go ahead and basically change, make some changes. First, let's make Bob actually look like a turtle. Uh, we do this by saying bob.shape because this is something Bob wants to do. Bob.shape is equal to it, and we're going to set it equal to turtle. Um, let's go ahead, and that changes him into a turtle. Bob.shape, bob. Let's see, size is equal to five. Can I? Will that work? That changes the line size. Okay, bob.shape size, and then. Yep, Bob dot shape size, and that makes it very big. I'm going to go ahead and say maybe three. Let's see. Let's experiment and see what happens. Three, two. Two should be plenty big, I would guess. Yeah, that looked good to everybody in the back. Okay. And then Bob dot size is equal to three. Um, I did not, he, he, oh, he says over here that, so it looked like our program ran, but then notice we got a red error. It says attribute error. Terror, uh, turtle has no attribute size. So 
Remember, what Python does, and that's different than other programming languages, is that we'll try to do everything it can until it crashes. So we imported a turtle, we created a turtle, we changed his shape, we changed how big he was, but then we called this function that doesn't exist. And so that's when our program stopped. So pen size. That will be how big the line he draws is, how thick it is. Okay? So, what did this do? So this, these three lines made it just easier for everybody to see. And again, the, uh, like I mentioned last, uh, last lesson, what we're doing here is essentially we're viewing the turtle as though he's walking on a bunch of white paper with a pen just attached to his tail. He starts out facing to the right just by default. And what we do is that we just tell him to move forward 50 pixels, and so he moves forward these 50 pixels. And then uh, we also told him to just increase his shape as, and, the, and how thick his pen was. So what is a pixel? Um, so let's not play acronym bingo and let's actually look on Wikipedia. Pixel Wikipedia, and not the phone, the pixel, or the laptop, the pixel, a picture element. That's what I thought it was. But essentially what it is is that if you it's a bit harder on those high-end displays, especially if you have one of those Macs. But if you look into the screen like this and get uncomfortably close, you can kind of see tiny little squares. This is especially apparent with text, if you just get close. Um, your screen is made up of tiny LCDs like this, liquid crystal displays, if you've got a LCD screen. And what they've got is that they've got a, they've got each of those pixels has a red, a blue, and a green inside of it. And then it displays color by flashing, by doing some combination of the red, blue, and green. Um, and it is kind of amazing. They don't always have to be a single square or rendered as a single square, but on your laptop, they're going to be uh, a single square. Um, your laptop, resol the most common resolution on screens these days is uh, 1920 by 1080, also called 1080p, right? Everybody familiar with HD displays of 1080p, right? Okay, that means that there are 1900 by 1800 pixels. Your, your, your screen is a square of, is a rectangle of 1900 and 20 by 1,800 pixels for a grand total of just over 2 million pixels. Also, most screens are 60, are 60 hertz, which means that these, uh, that these images can change up to 60 times a second. That means that your, um, that your screen, if you make it go wild, is capable of, display, of changing two, over 2 million pixels 60 times a second each second. Technology is great. Uh, and yet we use it to look at cats. Um, so um, that so what when we tell tell it to move 50 pixels, we tell it to move uh, when we tell our turtle to move 50 pixels, we are telling him to move just 50 square tiny squares this way. It's not very long. Um some laptops have much higher than 1080p, by the way, uh, a 1080p display, so just be aware of that. And when you've got a 4K display, that's, well, that's 1080, it's, it's, not, it's not really 4,000 resolution, it's not like 1080p. When you talk about 4K, it's more like, here's a, there, it's four 1080p's stacked together, essentially. So, um, so it's more like twice the amount of these guys, um, four times the amount of pixels, which is a lot. Um, all right, but moving on. Um, so what else? So we made it draw a line. So let's make it do something a bit more complicated. Let's move him forward a hundred, right? Okay. And it's going to be boring if we just tell this guy. You know, we can tell this guy to move forward a lot. We could tell him to move forward a hundred, a hundred, and a hundred. And they'll just follow those commands move and just kind of do it very smoothly. There's not going to really be a pause between them. It's going to move forward 100, then move forward 100, then move forward 100. 
all back to back to back. So what else can we do? Well, we can make him turn either right or left by telling him to turn right or left, which we can just simply say right to turn to the right. And then we can tell him to turn uh, the certain number of degrees to the right. Fortunately, you don't have to think clockwise, counterclockwise, because that's going to be annoying. So let's go ahead. He's going to turn. He's going to move forward 100. Turn right 90. That's a bit fast. We can slow that down though. Uh, Bob dot speed. Let's see. Let's go ahead and set it to 10. I think is the slowest, or is that the fastest? I don't know. We'll find out very quickly. Yeah, that's the fat. That's like the almost as the best I can get. So Bob dot speed one. So we can see move forward 100 turn, move forward 100, turn, move forward 100, and turn. Right? Let's see, can we get this actually down lower? 0 0.1 speed? Can we get, or does it have to be an integer? Oh, no, anything less than one, and it, think, it thinks it wants to go super fast. So, Bob, that speed, two. Let's see how, yeah, it's still pretty fast at two, so we'll do one. Right, bobbed up forward, then right, then bobbed up forward, then right, then bobbed up forward, and then he did a right turn. Right? Yes? So how do we know which forward? Like that is which forward is right? Um, how do we know where it's facing? So it knows where it's facing because when we start out, it's going to be facing to the right. And then it just, fig and then it just keeps in, in its memory where it's going to be. So it knows it fa starts out facing to the right, okay? Then we tell it, turn right 90 degrees, right? Now think about it. When you are moving and I tell you to turn to the right, you don't think about, well, which way was I facing? This way is now forward, right? If I tell you to turn right again, this way is going to be forward now. That's, the, that's basically the way it's, 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 and that's the way it's useful to think about. He doesn't think like, he doesn't have to remember like, okay, I'm currently at, or rather you don't have to remember, okay, the turtle's at, z was facing 90 degrees to the e he was facing 90 degrees clockwise, meaning he was facing east. Now he turned 90 degrees, now he's facing south. You just have to say, well, turn right 90 degrees of where you are now, right? Does that answer your question? No, I was saying before, because we didn't, we didn't tell it which way it was facing, so I was told. Oh. Yeah, by default, it's just facing to the right. Okay. It's already programmed in. You can there's a setting you can you can fiddle with to make it face to the north by default. But since that's an additional line of code, I'm just and and I operate under the uh, under the property the assumption of just keeping everything simple. We're just going to keep it like this right now. So now if we do this a fourth time, right? Copy paste this command again. Move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, and we turn each of the time. We've produced a square. Miracles of miracles, right? And notice that he's also back where he started, right? Because we move forward, we move forward 100, 100, 100, and 100. And then we turn, and each time he's turning 90 degrees, making a full circle, essentially, right? Um, so... That's, so he's turned to full 360 degrees, so he's back where he started. I mean, if I tell him to turn right 720, right, which is 360 degrees times two, he'll do four, he'll do two full rotations when he gets to that point. See, so here he's going, one rotation, two rotation, right? Remember, so remember, a circle is made up of 360 degrees, and basically a right angle is 90 degrees. Okay, now, um, now to introduce the concept of for loops, okay, which is that um, to get this done, I essentially copy pasted this line four times, or if you were really determined, you type this line out four times, which is really annoying. Right? Now remember, <clears throat> programmers are lazy. 
So what we're going to do is that we are going to um, run is that we are going to use something called a loop to shorten our code. So the way a for loop works, well, let me just show you what it says. For i in range, and the i here doesn't matter yet. For, but this is the way a loop looks in Python. And now notice that when I pressed enter, by the way, that it indented automatically. This is how Python will know what you want to loop. Whatever you want to loop is going to be indented inside of the for loop, like this, with the tab key. So let me delete this. Now what this says, the for i in range, this magical, magical phrase right over here, for i in range says that whatever's inside of, what's ever been indented inside of me is going to be repeated four times. If I were to do this and change it to 100, we'd repeat this 100 times, right? If I were to change this to 1, it would only do it once. If I were to do it, to, if I was to up this to 2, it change it to 2. Notice that all I'm changing is the number. If you want to, if you want to have something done a certain number of times, you just simply say 4i in range and then the number of times you want to do it. So over here, we're going to say 4i in range four, because we did this, we had to be copy pasted this four times. And to create a square, right, we're going to just simply say move forward 100 and then turn right 90 degrees. And we're going to just do that four times. Run it. Boom, 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 right? He moved forward once, turned right. So he moved forward once, moved forward and turned, right, and turned right, moved forward once and turned right, moved forward once and turned right, and moved, and moved forward once and turned right. It's not, so he did that four times. By the way, if I were to do this like, uh, you know, 20 times, it kind of gets a bit unnecessary because it's just going to draw over itself, right? It is currently drawing. It, it's just overriding the line that it drew on. Make sense? All right. So, so that is um, – now, the I does change in there, but we're not going to get into that right now. Right now, I just want to focus on – this, if I give it this command, it's going to do this this number of times. Yes? What's I? Magic word. Um, it's a variable. Um, so what I is, is we'll change basically each time we go through the loop. Um, and this gets into more stuff that I want to talk about, but I is like a variable that will change. Um, the first time we go through the loop, I will be zero. Then it'll be one, then it'll be two, then it'll be three. It will go up to, but won't include the number. So it will go zero to that number. That has to deal with, the reason why we do that is why we go from zero to, I, to n minus one as opposed to one through n has to do with old computer science reasons having to do with indexing and memory usage that I'm going to get into much later. But for right now, if we print out i, you'll see it prints out zero, one, two, three. We'll get into that again much later. Right now what I want to focus on is that if we say this magical incantation for a bit, then we can repeat the number of things we're going to do. Um, right. And so what's really cool is that we can do something like uh, this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and comment this out. So, but this is a lot of, com of lines to comment out, right? So, we'll get, actually, I'll go ahead and do this right now. So, I'll just comment this out because I want to make Bob do something else. Let's make Bob draw something a bit more complicated, okay? Let's do five lines, and what we'll do is we'll have him go forward. A 
Let me go forward 100 again. Oh, got to remember, it's bob.forward, not just forward, right? Bob.forward. Ooh. Bob.forward, and then we're going to make him do bob.right turn, or sorry, right. And this is going to be a bit weird, but I'm going to tell him to move 144 degrees. That's a bit weird, and you probably can't do that in your head. Neither can I. I'm actually terrible with visual, sh uh, with visual shapes. Once took an intelligence, uh, intelligence test, and I scored in the one percentile for a visual graphical representation of shapes or, or memory when it had to come to state uh, with shapes. That doesn't mean I scored in the top one percentile. That means that 99% of, of, of the rest of humanity was better than me at doing shapes. Fortunately, I don't need that in my job. There we go. So, what and and th so what he did here is that he moved forward a hundred. Let's go ahead and draw it. Let's make it a bit bigger, right? How do we make it bigger? By increasing the amount, uh, the amount that he draws each time. So let's go ahead and increase this to maybe three hundred. Depends on your screen, right? So what he does is that each time he's just simply doing each turn. He's moving forward and moving forward a hundred and forty-four degrees. Um, and it turns out 144 degrees times 5, right, 1, 1, so let's go over here for just a second, 144 times 5, some, oh, right, it's not going to register anything because this is still open, 144 times 5 is equal to 720 degrees, which is, you know, that's a multiple of 360 degrees, which means that over, that eventually he'll, and back where he started in terms of where he's facing, right? Um, you know, this is symmetrical operation. This is symmetrical. So if I tell him to do it 50 times again, he's just going to simply draw that star 10 times. One, two, so here, turn 144, move forward to 300, turn 144, move forward to 300, turn, turn. And now he's just simply tracing, tracing it again and again. Now, when we, as we're starting to work with for loops, the main thing we're going to be doing is just get, doing this repetition kind of stuff, okay? We're not really going to get too much into uh, the changing variable, but I want to show you what you can do with changing variables. It's really cool. All right, so I'm going to comment this out again, but not too much. And I'm just going to go back to drawing a square, right? 4i in range uh, let's go with 4 and we're just going to experiment a bit here I don't, I'm, I'm rewriting it because I don't want to destroy this one I want you to be able to uncomment it and use it again okay and go through and play with it again so here and it's always important that everything is lined up the same way. That's kind of the reason why I tell you to use a monospace font. Otherwise, uh, Python will yell at you for an indentation error like this. Unde unindent does not match any outer indentation level. You've got to have stuff lined up properly. Python does not like, because other, unlike other programming languages, Python wants you to indent stuff properly so that you can easily read this. So four I in range four, right? Again, this is just going to simply draw the square. One, two, three, four, boom. We've seen this three times already or something like that. So let's go ahead and see. We're not going to see any big change right now, but we might notice something. We might start noticing something if I do this plus I plus I. What the heck? Okay. Now that doesn't look like anything really. Okay. But if I told it to move, say, 50 times, and let's change the speed to something a bit quicker so that I can, so we, so we aren't going to let watch this all day. Interesting. Interesting indeed. 
It's like making it super thick. What's going on here? Well, fortunately, we're printing I. So we're seeing, um, so let's take a look. I is current, when we go through the loop the first time, uh, when we go through, as we go through the loop, I will change. It will go from a range of values. That's what the for I in range means. It will go for through a range of values. And that range is 0 to 50, not including the 50. So it goes through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we tell Bob, move forward 100 plus 0. 100 plus I, I is 0. That's the first thing he does. Then we tell him to move to turn right, print out zero. Then we tell them, now that you're facing down, move 100 plus i. Well, what's i now? Well, this is your, you just went through the loop once, so i is now one. So now it's 101 pixels, which we couldn't really see because what's the difference between 100 and 101 pixels? It's non-existent on, on these big screens, right? Maybe if it was an old 1640 by 480 display, we might be able to notice a different difference. Or maybe if you're like super trained or something, or like superhuman, you can uh, see it, but I can't. Then we tell the next turn, when we go back to the left, move 103 pixels, then move 104 to go up, then move 105 to go across again. And as a result, Right, so let's go ahead and now slow, we're going to go and slow this back down now that we know what to look for. 100, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106 pixels, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Each time he's moving just slightly more, one pixel at a time. Slow, so he's actually moving a bit farther, right? When he started, he just moved this amount. But now, he's moving this amount. Not a big change. So let's go ahead and actually make it a bit of a big change. Plus 10 times i. 100 times 10 times i. So what does that mean? We're going to move forward one, we're going to move forward 100 pixels. Then 110. Then 120 then 130, then 140, and so on and so forth. And now, we actually might get something interesting. We're getting a spiral. And this is part of the reason I love turtles. By make, you learn that basically making a small change like this by slowly increasing the amount you're going up by can make huge differences, right? Now, why is it such a big difference, right? Because I'm not saying, I'm saying that basically what you want to move is not 100. I want to print out I plus, and then I'm going to create a tab over here, plus, I want to better turn this into a string to convert it. We're going to move 100. Actually, this is an easier way to do it. I'm just going to say I want to print out i, comma, and uh, 10 times i, and it'll automatically put those into strings for me and separate them with the space. Pretty cool. Zero. So now i is, I is 1. I, plus one uh, I times 1 is 10. So notice that this is this number multiplied by 10. So that's the number of additional pixels we're, we're moving. And then let's simply do the total pixels. So uh, total pixels would be 100 plus 10 times i. So right, moving 100, then 110, then 120, then 130, 40, 50, right? And because we're moving more and more pixels, right? And it's not all starting in the center, by the way, because when we move this way, then this way, we're now moving 130 to get out this way, so we move back past where we started, right? So now that we get, when we go up, we're no longer, we move past this starting point. And that just keeps adding up. Uh, we can, in fact, um, we can, in fact, change this, by the way, to do any shape we want, just simply by changing the angle. 
So if you change it to 144, and you remember, what was 144? 144 was the star. We can now spiral that star out. It's pretty cool, right? It's like drawing the Starfleet logo in the middle of the star, too. So all I did was change the angle, right? The amount that we're turning over, over here. This is, again, a big preview of what we're going to be doing um, because I want you to be able to do all the labs first before we get into this. So if you're panicking right now, don't. I am hitting you with a bunch of information right now just to show you what we're going to be doing over the next couple weeks. It will take you, if you're a first-time programmer, it will take you weeks to master the for loop. So don't feel stupid if you don't get it immediately. Okay? And if you're coming from a different programming language, the for loop looks very, very different, right? If you're coming from something like C, right, the for loop's going to look something like this. Ignore the green. Uh... Ignore the quotes, I'll tell you about that in a second. But if you're coming from Java or C, the for loop looks something like this. To do the equivalent, do this 50 times, you say for int i is equal to 0, i is less than uh, 50, i plus plus, and then you have curly braces to surround the stuff. If you're coming from Java or C or C++, this is what you wrote, right? And this is also why they teach Boolean statements and if statements first in most classes. Because you got to know what a Boolean statement is before you can do this. Before you can do, because a Boolean statement is part of a, a for loop. This just looks like magic. You know, Python is magic. It's wonderful. Wonderful magic. Uh, and that's pretty cool, ain't it? And of course, we can actually make that go much faster by just simply increasing the speed to the maximum of 10. Yeah, that turtle is... Yeah, somebody gave that turtle some caffeine. Um, little known fact, turtles love caffeine. I'm not sure if that's a true fact or not. I'll get my wife, who worked at zoos with reptiles, to let me know about that. All right, so um, something cool that... So here's something else cool that we're doing. And by the way, again, I met... I mentioned that I am terrible at like doing uh, drawings and stuff. I'm going to leave this for right now and I'm going to create a new file because this one deserves its own file. Uh, let's call it um, color turtle, right? Things are kind of boring if we're just doing them in all black, right? You know, we're not, we're not like Ford who said, you know, you know, we're not like Ford in, in, in a couple ways. One, like he used to say, like you could get a Ford in any, a Model T in any color so long as it's black. Also, he was a rabid anti-Semite, but hey, you know. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of in vogue at the time, last I checked. Okay, so, turtle. All right, let's call this turtle um, Alice just because. Alice is going to show us something special here, right? So let's go ahead and create, uh, let's go ahead and create Alice. Mm. So, uh, what we can do is that we can change the color of the tur of what of what Alice is going to draw. So, if we say Alice color, pen color as opposed to color, color will change something a bit different. And we can just give it a string containing the color we want. Blue, blue. It really only recognizes the kind of primaryish colors. You know, blue, yellow, green. A uh, red, orange, the kind you would find in a in an eight packet, uh, you know, of crayons. Okay. It's some bit more. We can do more advanced colors, but that would require teaching you about colors. So we're gonna just do with this right now. Okay. Alice, not pen color. Let's just go ahead and see what Alice uh, what Alice has to show us. Oh right, let's go ahead and make Alice actually look appealing. Right. <clears throat> right, we want our turtles to look fantastic. Alice dot uh, shape size. Yes. Does Alice have to be shaped like a turtle? Yeah, I do want it to be. You don't have to. 
In fact, uh, when we work on our hurricane tracker, our turtle will be the, will be shaped like a hurricane symbol. So, um, so shape size. So shape size. I mean, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's your turtle. Um, two. What? Um, experience, but also by reading the documentation. That's an excellent question. How do I know what a turtle can do? Um, so if I go over here, and of course it's super tiny, but if I go to turtle.html for the docs, or if I, assuming I can spell that I spelled turtle, which sounds like a really bad sci-fi villain. In fact, I think it was a really bad sci-fi villain, uh, Battlefield Earth. Right, so uh, turtle dot, so we look at all the things the turtle can do, shape, <coughs> arrow, turtle, circle, square, triangle, classic, and then you can also register shapes, so you can create a new, you can basically say, hey, here's a picture of a shape, make the turtle look like this, right? So, um, and that can get really awesome and advanced stuff, but no need to go into that now. But we can make our turtle, we can make uh, Alice.shape, you can do a circle if you want to. Remember, got to close the quotation mark. And that's a bit hard to see, it's a bit hard to see, by the way, especially on this screen, but there is a blue outline around Alice, okay? So, and that's what pen color, setting the pen color will be. Uh, so now, let's go ahead and do a regular for loop. We're not going to really change, we're not going to do any variables. We're just going to say, do this 50 times. I in range 50. Okay, alice.forward. And we're going to tell Alice to move forward uh, 200. And then Alice, I haven't changed the speed at all. And now I'm going to tell Alice to do something something a bit different. Left turn, first off. Doesn't really matter. Uh, let's go ahead and do actually do 144 just to start out with. And then I'm going to change it to what? Oh, it's black right now because, again, evil genie. Got to, ch to change the color first. And let's also say Alice dot pen size is two, so it's a bit bigger. Right? And now it's mildly satanic, I guess, because <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so now let's go ahead and do just change this a bit. Let's do 150. 43 and see what happens. So just by getting the um, angle off, we're actually getting like one of those really cool things you used to be able to do in art class and now you don't get to do it anymore and it's kind of sad. Um, forget what they're called, but you can just create a, you know. So we've got this and now let's go ahead and do something, make this a bit exciting. Let's copy, we're gonna copy and paste this. No need to copy the uh, pen size though. We're just gonna copy and paste the, uh, everything else and change blue to red. Right, so we go through the blue loop of creating 50 lines. Right, so this will run 50 times. Right, each time, the reason this doesn't come up as, as the star and kind of slowly turning is because we told it to turn one degree short each time. And again, these little changes we did make huge changes. And now we're in the red loop. Let's go ahead and terminate it and speed it up considerably. Alice.speed, and if we do it to, and it, let's go ahead and do it to eight. So not quite super fast, but it's still very, very fast. And now red, right? And important thing to note is that, you know, 
if Alice encounters like a a something that you get something like this, um, Alice will basically if Alice encounters something she's already drawn, uh, you know, some amount of ink that's already been draw, uh, drawn, she'll just draw right over it and overwrite the color that's already there. Um, we can do interesting things like changing this to 123 and see what happens. So let's see uh, how the shape changes based if we make it a bit more of a drastic change. It becomes very pretty, in fact. Or if we up the size over here from 200 to 400. So now blue is going to be exactly the same as it's been. Well, not as it's been. Right, and now we've got this big one over here. So you can make really complex shapes just by changing stuff. Again, little... Um, now, of course, just uh, think about this and relate this to bugs. Very little changes in your system can just throw everything out of whack. It's like the uh, whole... It's, a, it's that whole quantum butterfly principle or something. You know, step on a butterfly and it rains in Chicago or something like that, you know? Or, you know, or if you're... Or if it's time travel, step on a butterfly and your grandpa never got born. And so now we're in a paradox and sci-fi writers are terrible at time travel. So um, let's go ahead and talk about color, though. Color, it is complicated. You, don't, you wouldn't expect that for something that basically that, that a four-year-old can do, right? You know, four-year-old can pick up crayons and color, but color is tough. What is color? Um, again, we're going to just simply talk, uh, I'm going to go to um, XKCD, oh, interesting, the five most common uh, colors as defined by several hundred thousand participants, interesting, so these are all very common colors, also notice these codes underneath it, hashtag 0165FC, that's never really going to be trending, is it? Um, uh, the I'll get to those in a, sec in a second. Color models. My understanding of color over time. Color is three primary colors mixed together. Three primary, and this is from grade school to now. Three-ish primary colors mixed together. RGB or you know red, green, blue or red, yellow, blue or cyan, magenta, yellow, and what's K? I have no idea. What's K? What? Black. Black. Right. Unknowable, maybe what you see as blue, I see as blue, you as, or it's a rainbow, each color is a different wavelength, and it's a mix of infinite wavelengths filtered through three eye pigments that we have. And then something about an opponent model, some abstract multidimensional gamut filtered through an inconsistently implemented color device profiles. Ah, so you ever wonder, so you probably saw Apple's monitor come out, and it was $5,000 and didn't look anything special to you, Right? Well, if you don't know what you're going to be doing with the five thousand with a monitor that costs thousands of dollars, it was not targeted for you. It was ta uh, targeted for professionals who need to know who need to make sure that their monitor is super properly calibrated to handle colors and blacks in the right amount. Like dark colors are really tough for uh, for that kind of, for displaying. Um, like you can probably just go ahead and look at your neighbor's screen, and you'll notice that their color profile. The way the lights, white looks on their screen or the black looks on their screen is just a tiny bit different than yours, assuming you have different models of computers. Right? If you're looking, if you're, you know, like you two over there who both have Apple computers next to each other, it's not really gonna. Don't mean to pick on you specifically. You just happen to be the closest people I can see that both had Apple, the, both the same computer models, right? But if you look at somebody else's computer, you're gonna notice that the colors are slightly different. This is especially apparent with like really cheap computers and the color is really different. And then it goes to hyperdimensional four-sided uh, Klein manifold. Is that a thing? Hopefully someone else's problem. Color, because here's what you're doing. When you're working on, a comp on like doing photography and videography, you want to make sure your color is basically what you see is what's going to be printed out, right? If we're going to print it out on a poster or put it up in Times Square and if that... Blue, you know, again, I hate, I, 
I'm going to, you know, I'm going to get into politics just slightly. One of President Trump's uh, complaints that he has is that basically is that photos show him as extremely orange, right? And, and he complains about lighting. This is that thing, right? You don't want computer, if you're working on a computer and you discover that the person you're working on, now that you threw him up in Times Square, is now orange, that's going to generate more buzz than, pop, than basically your advert campaign did, right? So, you want, so it's important to get color correct. That's the most I'm going to step into that because that's not inside the scope of the class. I will d delve into politics later on just simply because the, um, in the sense that like there are some security things that come up and, I'm saying, and I want to show you simple fixes for that that we can show like when it comes to social security numbers and stuff. We'll le le learn about regular expressions and how to find any social security number in any document and therefore do a find replace all which is kind of useful. So getting color is tough, right? And we are in that thing, whole thing of unknowable, maybe what you see as blue, I see as a, but it's more of a, you see as a slightly darker blue or slightly lighter blue on your screen, or the white is just a slightly bluish white. It's tough. So the... Here we, so here um, are, so what we typically do is use an RGB model, though. That is what we use on our screens, okay? Um, and that's what it, this is saying. This is a color combination of, this is the amount of blue, uh, of red, this is the amount of green, and this is the amount of blue, okay? So, um, for instance, yellow we are ff uh, we have amount of ff on red on red the amount of ff on blue so ff on on green and 14 blue red on the other hand is e5 red and the, what in the world is this what are these what are these weird numbers with letters in them did somebody just mash on a keyboard well if you notice the only letters that appear are a through f and that's hexadecimal in other words, it is a base 16 number system. So it's as good a time as any to learn a bit about binary. So binary systems. Um, I used to work in an uh, uh, When I was doing my graduate studies at Georgia State University, we got moved into a new department. And I happened to put up a sign because we were right next to the astronomy department. And my sign said binary systems, people who work with binary systems that way and people who work with binary systems that way because we both work with binary si systems, they just happen to be different binary systems. Uh, their binary systems were dealing with stars. So um, binary system, in what we're talking about here, is that we are dealing with a, two di uh, a, a system of digits that has only two values. Whereas when we're talking about uh, you know, standard math, we deal with... Um, you know, 10 different values. So we've only got two to think about, so it's actually quite easier. So all we're going to learn about is addition and like and basically translating them for right now. So let me open up Gini, which is a text editor I use, and I'll eventually transition to this for Python, um, just because I like it a whole lot more and it works really good. So a binary number looks just like a bunch of ones and zeros, but it does have a value, okay? This value is of 1010 zero, one, zero does correspond to a certain value. Um, and to figure out what it is, what we're going to do is we're going to look at digesting something in painstakingly detail. In painstaking detail. Right, 982. Not any tricks or anything, nothing up my sleeves here. This is just regular old 982. Okay, not a number we think about much. It's just the number and it happened to be the one I typed out. Now, what you know about 982 is that it's composed, you can actually break it up into multiple numbers. Like, I could do, I could break it up into 981 plus 1. That's not particularly useful for our demonstration, though. So I'm going to break it up into its three composite parts. 900 plus 80 plus 2, right? It's the 2's place plus the 10's place plus the 100's digit, right? 
982. Everybody got that? This this seems childishly uh, childishly pedantic and um, right, like not assuming that like you're stupid or something. You're not. I'm just being very slow about this because I want to make sure the magic tr trick I'm doing works, right? We can further unsimplify it, right? Because 982 is as simple as it gets. We can unsimplify this by saying, hey, this is 10 times 100 times, uh, sorry, plus, let's go ahead and do plus 10, sorry, uh, 8 times 10. plus 2 times 1, which we can further complicate by making it a bit, m by, by expanding on this a bit more, a way that's a bit more mathematical. And I'm going to use regular notation rather than the Python notation. Right? This is, so when we deal with binary numbers, the value is, the way we know the value is that the two is, multi, the, the number in the twos place is multiplied by 10 to the zeroth power. The number in the tens place is multiplied by 10 to the first power, or 10. The thing in the hundreds place is multiplied by 9, so, so 10 times 10 to the second power, or 100. So 10 squared. If we had a thousands place, it would be times 10 to the third. See the pattern, right? You can break any number down into this. Now, the binary number system has places as well. They're not the tens, the one. They're not the tens, the ones, and the hundreds. They are the ones place, the twos place, let me go and switch this to insert mode. Okay, this is the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, the eights place, and the sixteenths place. Uh, what would the next place be for the next digit? 32. Notice that they're doubling each time. Each time we multiply by 10, here we're multiplying by 2. Okay, so this number is, by the way, we have 116 plus 1.8 plus 0 4s plus 1 2 plus 0 1s. So the total is 26. That's what that number is in binary. Right? Easiest, by the way, the easiest way to do it is to just simply, you know, write the number on top of each of these numbers and translate it out like that. Um, so let's go through the same process we did for um, this thing, right? And to be clear that I'm working in binary and not decimal system, I'm just going to put underscore 2. That's a nice conventional way to say this is a binary number, not a 10-digit number, right? You especially useful because I'm about to put um, a bunch of numbers over here. It was 16 plus 8. So let's go ahead and expand on this a bit more. It was, so what is 16? So 1 is, so this number is 2 squared. Sorry, 2 to 0, sorry, this is 2 to the first power. This number is, 8 is 2 cubed, right? And this is 2 to the fourth, right? So this was plus 0, plus 0, plus 0. I actually have a wonderful handout that I'm going to, that I made years ago, and I'm going to actually use it for once. This is why I make those handouts. Sorry. Ah, that was my error. Two to the third. This is why I like monospace fonts. We can just line everything up. Okay. 
And again, let's further expand this out. 1 times 2 to the 4th plus 1 times 2 to the 3rd plus 0 times 2 squared. Right? There was nothing in the 4's place. Plus 1 times 2 to the 0th power. Sorry, 2 to the 1st power plus 2 times 1 times 2 to the Actually, it was 0 to the 0 to the zero power. So that's what that is. Let me go ahead and see if I can't pull up that handy-dandy thing I made because I save everything. Everything. Well, not your stuff specifically, unless it's, like, amazing. But I do try my best to save old, let's see, intro, old, fall 2016. Do I have... See, was this binary? Notes for chapter five. Nope. Back when I used notes, how quaint. Okay. Um, I did this binary. Let's see. Old intro. Hmm. Nope. Let's see. Intro. How frustrating. I will find it. Because I did it, and it was quite uh, extensive. I put way too much effort into it, let's just say. It is formatted beautifully because LaTeX is awesome like that. Um, but, oh! Is it in here? Nope. This is just old Java code. Um, oh! In here? Nope. I'll find it some other time. There is, but I did this, I have this wonderful binary sheet. But the point being with binary numbers is that these are binary digits, bits. Bi bit is short for binary digit. And each bit basically has only two values, zero or one. And mathematically speaking, that, that basically we're multiplying it by a certain amount of, two, uh, by basically a power of two. So one square, so basically this is, this is 2 plus 8 plus 16. So either we're adding something with a 1, or we don't ha add something which has a 0. Now, adding binary numbers, by the way, when they're in binary, is super, super easy. It's like the easiest thing ever. It's like, it's just, I'm just going to make numbers up. Okay, here we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and add these numbers up. Uh, and I will need a space for the carry, of course. So, uh, 0 plus 1 is what? Yep, 1. 1 plus 1 is what? It would be 2, right? So, but we can't represent a 2 here, right? Just like you can't put a 10 in one single place, right? There's no digit for a 10. So what we do is we say it's 0 and which is 2 in binary, and carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, and in binary, 2 is 10, or 1, 0. So put down the 0 and carry the 1. There's only four possibilities that you can uh, have. 0 plus 0, which equals 0. 1 and 0. Um, 1 and 1. And then the last possibility is uh, 1 and 1, and you got a 1 from your carry. In which case, it's like, for instance, suppose we had this value instead. OK? 1 and 1 is equal to so let's see, 1 and 1 is equal to 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is equal to 3 outside of binary, right? So 3 in binary is 2 plus 1. 
which is the two's place plus the one's place, so it's equal to one and one. So put one down here, carry the one, one plus zero plus zero is one, one plus zero is one, zero plus one is one, and one plus one is zero, carry the one. Binary addition is super easy. How do you convert? I mean, the other thing you can do is just convert it to decimal and then convert it back to binary. Um, converting back to binary is mildly annoying, but not too bad. And so how much is this? Well, again, it's not too hard to figure out how much these numbers are. One, two, um, four, eight. This is a 16, right? So I'll just put one and six over here. This is a 32, and this is a 64, right? Each time we just simply doubled, right? So we know that we've got a, so let's just simply go down the line and add everything up. We've got a 64. We don't have a 32 because there's a zero. We have a 16. We have an eight. We have a four. We have a two. We don't have a zero. So now we just add everything up. Um, so that would be, let's see. So this is 80, right? So key to doing addition in your head like this, find all the, find all the multiples of 10, right? Six and four is a 10. So we've, got six, so we've got 60, 10, and six and four. So that becomes 80 in your head. Hold on to the 80. Is there any other 10s? There's an eight and a two. That's a 90. 94. So this is all 94. You can check me on that one. But the way you do addition in your head is to find the tens. Find the multiples of 10. Find two or three numbers that have the one digits that adds up to 10 like that. Um, it's just not something you teach. they teach in school. Um, and I mean, I have a calculator with me at all times now in my pocket. Teacher said I would never have a calculator with me all my times. Well, who's laughing now? I am. Ha, 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 um, ha. But it was quicker to do it in my head than to pull out a, uh, a pie. So we'll get back to how binary and, and numbers deal with each other in this. Um, in, that's what I'll do. So this is what I'll figure out what I'm going to do for the homework over the, over the break. Sorry, over the weekend. I'll post the new homework. And I'll post the readings for you guys to do. Okay. Also, we do need a note taker in this class in case you didn't see the announcement. If you want to be a note taker, just come and see me or email me.